Welcome to this presentation on multivariate polynomials in Julia. So first, uh, multivariate polynomials used at all in Julia. So here is a non-exhaustive list of packages that use multivariate polynomials. So first, homotopy continuation solve polynomial system with a technique called homotopy continuation. So check the package if you want to know more. Sum of square implement sum of square programming to check, for example, non-negativity of polynomials. Symbolics. I implement a lot of, whole lot of tools to do symbolic manipulation of expressions. Grobner implement Grobner basis computation, uh, which is a very hard problem based on Fourier's f core algorithm. Semi algebraic sets implement the Grobner, uh, some Grobner basis computation using the Buschberger algorithm. And based on that, uh, implement reduction modulo ideal and solving polymer systems with this Grobner basis as well. The NEMO and abstract algebra package implement the whole computer algebra system. And the condensed matter SOS implement estimating uh, some condensed matter quantity uh, with some R square. And there are also other package, but that doesn't fit in one page. So how do you represent these multivariate polynomials? So one way uh, is to have a sorted list of terms. So a term is a coefficient, think of a number times some monomial which is a product of, of variables uh, to the power of some exponents. And then the polynomial is just a sum of this term that you represent as a vector of terms. Now in this vector, you would usually sort the terms um, with respect to an order on the monomials. So what order on the monomials? So when you have univariate monomials, it's quite clear. You just order on the exponents. But when you have several variables, it's not clear because the vector of exponents how do you compare a vector of integer with another vector of integer? So you can actually use um, several different algorithm uh, ordering. You still need the ordering to satisfy a few rules. For example, if you have this ordering between two monomial and this ordering between two monomials, you should have this ordering between the products, for example. Um, if the ordering does not respect that, then it becomes harder to, for example, implement multiplication of polynomials. So multivariate polymers implementation where to assume these kind of things. So now how do you represent the monomials themselves? Well, there are different choices. So the, when I started this project, I initially had only uh, this choice. And I've kind of naively hoped that this would satisfy everyone. And so the variable would be represented by a name that would be used for printing, and then an ID to be used for fast comparison of variables. And then a monomial would be a vector of the variables that are presented in monomial with the respective exponents. So these two vectors have the same size. But then Robin actually came out with a new ID in type polynomials. Uh, he thought that if you had uh, only a, a few variables, it would be much more efficient to represent actually the exponents in, in a tuple. And to handle the fact that sometimes you could multiply monomials with different variables, you would, um, you would take the list of variables and store it in the parameter of the type. So whenever you multiply two monomials, you would look at the, um, so do it compile time because it's, um, it's in the parameters of the type. In compile time, you can compare. If this is the two monomials with the same variable, then you can simply sum the exponents. If they have different variables, then uh, you, can, you can know how to combine the exponents um, at compile time by seeing which variable is, is different and so on. And so with the, this representation, you somehow move some, some, some time that was uh, done in the runtime, some computation time that was done in the runtime, you simply move them to the compile time. And so at the end, it just gives a much faster implementation. So somehow when you see this, um, indeed, this is faster. But if you have uh, really a lot of variables, then probably this approach does not scale. Also, if you dynamically create new variables with new names, you would have to combine a new code every time. So with this kind of dynamic, um, 
use case, you still maybe want to, to use this one, but that's why this is called dynamic polynomials. And for the other use case, you, you could use this one. So now that we had two uh, implementation, uh, we thought of creating a multivariate polynomials API package um, so that you could, you could write code that would use multivariate polynomials without having to depend on this one or this one, it would have an abstract API. But then a third one came up as well by Chris and Yingbo. And so they, they thought that in fact, in many times when you have your polynomials, you know that the exponents are not going to be um, so large. So actually in this representation, you assume the polynomials will fit in 64 bits, but maybe you know the polynomial actually fits in 16 bits. And if the polynomial fits in 16 bits, then in 64 bits, you can actually fix the exponents of four variables. And so they have this packed representation of the monomials. And also um, they will assume that each variable will be represented by where it fits in this, in this list of exponents. And so you, have, you don't have to to have this vector of variable that you would compare with the name at compile time. And they took care uh, that the implementation would be friendly with the, the CMD operation on compilers so that the multiplication of, um, and comparison of monomials uh, is much faster. And then a last example, uh, in the case of condensed matter, uh, we have an application when you have different sites and each site, you have some spin and the spin um, will actually be represented by only one variable because you have a variable X, Y, and Z, but when you multiply X times Y, you have something like imaginary number times Z. And so whenever you multiply two variables, at the end, you have something with some numbers times another variable, you have these identities that allow you to always simplify up to having only one variable. And so you have a list of variables and all the variables will have, so monomial is a product of variables and all the variables are from different sites. So you can represent the monomial as a sorted dict with the site and then the variable at this site. So in this, in this application, the simplest uh, way to represent all these identities was actually to create a new type of monomial. And so as you can see, there is an incentive to create um, more and more monomial representation. And it would be a pity if for every monomial representation, you had to, to carry out uh, a very similar work of doing the rest of the implementation to have a fully working multivariate polynomials. So the multivariate polynomials package actually provides this. It has these abstract types and abstract API. And then once your monomial representation implements these things, you have the rest for free. So you have an implementation of polynomials that uh, implements uh, the mutable arithmetic API so that you can have a, a fast mutable addition and multiplication and so on. You have uh, some pretty printing in LaTeX and so on. You have differentiation and substitution and evaluation and also some Euclidean division algorithm uh, GCD computation and so on. And of course, everything, every other algorithm that is built on top of multivariate polynomials API, and so does not use any uh, internal assumption um, on one of the particular four uh, representation, will also work for not only for all the um, current implementation of monomials, but also all the future ones if they just use this API. And so with that, I hope that here I've presented only four, but I hope that in the future, um, more um, representation of monomials uh, would be created since this lower the cost of their creation. So thanks for your attention and let me know if you have any question.